Let's talk about how to buy or sell a business for 100 million, 10 million, 100,000. Whatever the number is, I'm, I'm on the, my farm gym. It's my Rocky Balboa gym. <laughs> it's kind of cool. It's a storm outside. But um, so I'll tell you from my experience, you know, I, my first business I built or one of my first businesses I ended up selling. It's like a nightlife business in North Carolina called Triangle Fiesta. And, you know, that was like a six figure sale. And I've bought businesses for seven figures, eight figures. So I got a lot of experience in this and I'll tell you some stuff that I've learned that maybe helps you. Let me first take it from the standpoint, if you own a business now, or if you're starting a business, how to maximize it to sell it. So, and like I said, I bought a lot of stuff. I bought recently, I bought bodybuilding.com. That was a business that I won't, I mean, it's a private company, but it's a big business, big brand. And I'll just, and like I said, starting, I give you experience from little businesses all the way up to the big businesses that I bought that were doing nine figures in revenue when I bought them or selling a business. Here's the first thing you need to know. If you own a business, you should build it from day one that the in a certain way, doing a certain couple little techniques that make it easier to sell. So number one, you need to structure the accounting correctly. It makes it easier to sell. Accounting is usually entrepreneur's least favorite thing to do because it's not that creative and fun. But if you build the business and you can't back up the numbers and you specifically, here's the simple answer to this. Um, don't trust the first accountant that says they're just because they're a CPA doesn't mean they're going to do it right. Find an accountant that's actually worked and helped people sell businesses because you need things. If you can get your financials audited, that's great. You can't always afford that. If you have a public company, obviously you can, but smaller businesses you can't, but treat the business as if you want audited financials. Um, try to use better software. Now, NetSuite is kind of the gold standard for building uh, your accounting around. It's expensive. So some people use simpler things like QuickBooks. I've used both. If you can afford it, and you're investing in your business and you, if there's anywhere you want to invest, it should be in the accounting bookkeeping side. So some practical things, you know, offshore, like in the Philippines, you can find real CPAs, um, kind of American trained CPAs that can do your bookkeeping for much cheaper. And then I would recommend you have an accountant oversee them that's in your country. So if you're American, you have a US CPA. Set this stuff up right, pay attention once a month minimum. Do a Zoom with your account, even if it costs extra money and say, I want these books to be perfectly set up. Make sure your chart of account is set up well. So that's kind of number one. Invest time, energy, and money above average comparatively to the average entrepreneur from day one on your accounting. Okay, number two, the legal structure. Now, this is a complicated, I, you know, I have many structures to businesses, some very complicated and some I've started with sim simple LLCs. What I'll tell you is this, um, simple. Make sure you have a nice Dropbox where you store all your articles of incorporation, all that stuff. Believe it or not, simple things like that can scare away a potential buyer of your business. So somebody comes and you're building a business, even if it's small business, medium, large, if they ask you on day one, can you show me kind of the structure and the accounting? If it takes you two weeks to produce, even if you've done nothing wrong, it's gonna scare them off. They're gonna be like, oh, why can't they instantly produce it? So even with your legal, I set up a nice Dropbox structure, have all the contracts, you know, have a contracts folder, articles of incorporation folder, just simple stuff. I know this sounds super cliche, but selling a business, is a, there's a lot of emotion to it and people are taking a risk of maybe giving you millions of dollars to own your business and they're always looking for a reason not to buy your business. People get spooked very easily, very easily, okay? So if you wanna sell the business for maximum, you want your bookkeeping, above average atten attention's been paid from day one, your legal, all the legal stuff is nicely set up, okay? In just a Dropbox that you could share or you could create a data room for that. The third thing, um, you wanna invest in people and what that means is don't just build the business. You need to be probably the CEO of your business, 
But really, you wanna also sell, when you go to sell the business, that if you leave, this thing's gonna run on its own because you built a nice team. That again, takes investment, dealing with frustration. You probably, you know the old saying, if you want something done right, do it yourself. Well, that doesn't apply if you wanna sell your business for the maximum price because people know, even if they ask you to stay on and do an earn out, it's called, they still are looking for a business that somewhat at some point will be able to run without you because they're buying you out. So when it comes to selling the business, it, you're gonna have to take the time. Now, on average, you're gonna have, to, for like a CEO or a COO or a CFO, you're gonna need to kiss a lot of frogs. So from day one building your business, be committed to, to hiring and firing fast. Hire fast, you probably need a 10 to one ratio for leadership. But most people give up and say, I'm just gonna do this business myself. But when you go to sell the business, it's much less valuable than if you had taken the time kissed a lot of frogs, hired a lot of people, fired a lot of people until you were left with, you don't need 10 amazing executives. You need like two beside you. I like to think in threes, okay? That way if somebody's on vacation or leaves, you always have two, a redundant system, kind of like belt and suspenders. So my advice is try to build an executive team of three people so that when you exit and they send you a check or a wire for that business, they know they have two people staying on. Okay, and even when you build the executive compensation for those people, have some kind of clause where if you leave, they're even more incentivized to stay on. You don't want them to exit with you necessarily, which sometimes happens, but that's for a more advanced conversation. The fourth thing I would say is you wanna build a combination. All good brands now, a days or big brands are somewhat personal brands. Elon Musk, Tesla is somewhat a personal brand. He uses his personal imagery to grow this brand, his, his personal uh, je ne sais quoi, okay? So Zuckerberg, you know him, Bill Gates, you, it, most of us know these Warren Buffett. So these big brands, you wanna build a brand that has an aspect to you personally, maybe you're using social media to grow it, you're using your personal presence to attract talent and customers, but always build a brand component that's bigger than you. Once again, people know if they buy you out, if it's all predicated on you and you being the face of the business and the executive team, they're gonna lose that and they're gonna devalue your brand. You're gonna get less money when you sell your company. By the way, if you're looking to sell your company, I do consulting to connect people with the best business brokers globally. So I'm gonna put a link below or on the side here. If you wanna sell a company that you own, um, go here, fill out this quick form, put in the info and I'll tell you, I can even give you my estimate of what you'd be able to sell your business and I'll help you connect you uh, to the right business broker, okay? So go here or go to tylopez.com slash podcast, sell a company. tylopez.com slash podcast, sell a company. It'll redirect you to a simple application. Let me give you, I, I don't always have time to do every one, but um, I can give you, if you've got an established, if you've got a new business, never made a dollar, don't go to this website, but if you've got a business, even if you're only doing a hundred grand a year or a million, I've helped people find the right business broker. I'm working on one of my followers, they had a family business and I, I don't want to jinx it, but they've got, I helped them connect to the right business broker and they've got an offer for more than $50 million in, in their business. Now that's an exceptional case. But you'd be surprised sometimes there's somebody out there who wants to buy your company, even if it's only doing 100 grand a year. The sweet spot is if you're kind of hit, you know, 500,000 to 5 million a year. If you're beyond that, I can put you with some different business brokers that can at least shop it around. It's always good to shop your business. It's kind of like you have a piece of real estate, get it appraised. You can get it appraised sometimes, you know, real estate, and you can pull. Uh, you can refi and pull some cash out, but in a business case, it also encourages you. So if you have a business, click on the link below, or if you're listening audio, tylopez.com slash podcast, sell a company. Let me get you a quote from a business broker on what they think your business might be worth and if they can potentially sell it. Sometimes you can do a partial sale or a full sale if you love the business, but super important, even if you're not ready to sell, get a quote. So tylopez.com slash podcast, sell a company, type that in or click the link here. Now, a couple other things on selling a business. Um, when the time comes, 
you want to use the right business broker, even if somebody comes to you out of the blue or directly to you and says, I will buy your company for a hundred grand, a million, 10 million, hundred million, whatever. Get a business broker to shop it around. You can put a carve out that existing offers you have, they won't get a commission on. Cause sometimes you got to read the contract. Sometimes business brokers will be like any sale, I get my commission, but don't, and usually most business brokers, it's not that much money. And oftentimes, you know, maybe I'm biased cause I work with business brokers, but like they'll often get you a higher price by shopping around. In general, don't take the first offer. Shop it, you know, you want ideally one, more than one term sheet or LOI or IOU, you know, they call them MOU, uh, 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 indications of interest, LOI. There's MOUs, which is memorandum understanding. That's a different concept, but LOI or term sheet, it's kind of a term that people use in this industry. And in general, um, you wanna get three of those. Now, it's not always the case. Sometimes you'll get 20, okay? Sometimes you'll get zero, sometimes you get one. But in general, even if you have a direct offer on your business, a mistake I see people doing is like, well, you know, my friend's friend offered me 100 grand. Send it to a business broker. If you sign a contract, say carve out, I've got these three people that already made offers. If I go with them, you get nothing. And you can even put the names of those potential people in the contract. Talk to a lawyer on that. But you want three offers. It's kind of like if you're getting married, you want to probably have gone on three dates with three different, I mean, with a date with three different people. So you know, you won't in hindsight go, what if, okay? So that's where business brokers become important. You can also use social media and advertise your business yourself. The, the, the good thing about some kind of professional helping you is you can get them to sign a confidentiality. You don't always want to be putting on your social media. Here's my data room login. Here's all my info in here like then you're gonna get your competition seeing all your trade secrets. So it's sometimes good. The thing about a business broker is you can get, or, or some kind of professional, you can use a lawyer sometimes, uh, that you can get that element, you can get people to sign an NDA, more confidentiality than just shouting it from the rooftops. Sometimes it's fine to shout it, but it depends on your personality. Some people, if you have trade secrets and you don't want people poaching your employees and stuff like that, it's better to have some professional help you. Now, let's talk for a second about buying a company. That's a whole nother video. <laughs> As I started this video, I was like, oh, this is longer. I'm only, uh, it's late at night, but let me just say this on buying companies. A couple, three little pointers on buying companies. Buyer beware. Almost always when I buy a company, I'm assuming there's some things they didn't disclose. So if you get a rosy picture that this business is doing great and it's making millions and that, then you gotta ask yourself, why are they even selling it? Usually there's something wrong, expect it. I bought a business not too long ago and it had, you know, 5 million of bills that were undisclosed, three or four or five, I forget the exact number, but but I wasn't shocked because I knew when people are selling a business, they often have some skeletons in the closet. So you need to go into it expecting it. What's your job in your due diligence phase is to be sure there's no insanely large skeletons in the closet. The insanely ones are what'll get you. Okay, so you need to allow if it's a $10 million asset, it probably should allow that there's 3 million of negative that they've not disclosed. If you do your due diligence, you're never gonna be able to negate all risks. So buy, that's why I said buyer beware. They're usually not telling you something, even if they're ethical, they wanna paint the rosy picture. Number two, try to get some kind of payment over time. That way, if there was a lie to you, you haven't given them all the money because it's not always easy to get the money back in reality. So if you buy a business, you know, you go out, you say, look, I'll pay you an X amount of payments, okay? And number three, when you can get seller financing, which kind of goes along with number two. But number two, even if you're not using seller financing and you have all the cash yourself, try to not wire it all at once because of number one, buyer beware. So that's a simple way to protect you that sometimes is better than all the legal contracts in the world. Um, you know, number three, get a seller note. That's where they, let's say a business is a hundred grand, you give them 20 grand up front and they finance it and you pay them in payments the rest of the 80 grand. That accomplishes number two and uh, spreads the risk. And also there's an element of leverage there, which can be okay and try to not, number four, don't, you know, in general, don't personally guarantee that seller's note. So that if you find out the business is junk and you've made some payments, you can cut your losses, they'll get the business back 
Now this is more intricacy if you're using the business as collateral, not everybody will do this, but anyway, if you wanna buy a business, you can also, I can connect you with business brokers. So same link I'll put in the corners or below here or tylopez.com slash podcast, sell a company. That'll take you to the same, uh, sorry, tylopez.com slash buy a uh, podcast, buy a company. tylopez.com slash podcast, buy a company. That'll take you to the link to where you can fill out what kind of business you're looking for. I can connect you with business brokers globally that you can kind of see, you know, if you want a restaurant, a laundromat, a car wash, an online business, an Amazon business, there's brokers out there that specialize. And sometimes it makes sense to buy a company to kind of supercharge your business. You can buy, I would recommend, you know, you want to buy a business that your current staff, your current expertise, another business in the mix doesn't confuse it. It's center, it adds a synergy. There's a lot of, you know, efficiencies of scale. So try to look for something. If you want a business broker, I can connect you to one. So yeah, you know, buying businesses is the kind of final frontier of business. You look at, you know, Louis Vuitton, wealthiest guy in the world. He bought like 50 or 60 companies to build his empire. Elon Musk bought Tesla. You know, he didn't build it from scratch. So there's a power in buying a company. It's a power in selling a company. Elon Musk sold his first company for, I think, 20, 30 million bucks. That leverage, that, that gave him the power to do his next thing. So, you know, business, falling in love with your business is good, but it's okay to be in the mentality of, you know, you build stuff, you sell it, and you maybe buy something else or build something from scratch. That kind of fluid understanding of, of a business. And a lot of entrepreneurs get so attached to one business kind of lose perspective. It's okay if you build a business and it's your baby, but it's also okay to add on by buying other businesses that other people built. And it's also okay to sell a business, you know, but get a quote <laughs> so you at least can do the math and do the, you know, you could compare the cash you're gonna get, the net present value kind of calculation, which tells you, am I better keeping it and getting profit every year for my existing business or am I better selling it and getting a large lump sum now? even if it's a discounted number to the future flow, uh, the future sum, the sum of future cash flows. In the same way, do you wanna buy a business? Well, do the math on the time, an opportunity cost it'll take to build that brand versus just buying it on day one and being in business, hypercharger business. So anyway, if you're looking to buy a business or sell a business, tylopez.com slash podcast, sell a company. If you wanna buy one, tylopez.com slash podcast, by a company. So see you there. Hopefully this gave you a few pointers. Put a comment below. What do you think is something I left out that's super important in building a company that you can sell? Or leave a comment on, you know, what's something I left out that's super important when you go out to buy a company from your experience. So I'm gonna hit the finish up the gym here. Too much talking. <laughs>